Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and I am here to do an unboxing, which you've already seen, and I was going to try to surprise you because I thought people would be so surprised that I bought this, but it's already, I, I always forget that the subject line gives it away, but yeah, I think that most people who follow my channel would be surprised because you know I have tried to, tried out the Deviant Moon Tarot. Uh, but it just didn't quite work for me. I could appreciate it, but I ended up trading it. Uh, so when this little one came up, uh, I, I still went ahead and purchased it. Uh, so let's take a look at this together. Because this is going to be so awesome for Brace the Magical, a.k.a. and appreciate Halloween, a.k.a. love we love Cyrus. Sawin. <laughs> Sawin. Uh, our gremlins were added again. Please and find the clothes ladder as a replacement card with a correct drawing on the back. <laughs> so this is to replace. So you can see they're quite small, uh, which is very similar to a mini Lenormand. Uh, so here we have Mildred Payne, ID number 31567, Fenwood Asylum, uh, which... Look at that creepy picture. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Oh, <laughs> I can't even tell you the name of this until we get into it. So I can't remember. I bought this when at the very end of the kind of pre-order phase. So I really didn't have to wait too long for it. But I had already forgotten about it. Um, so here we have Mildred Payne's Secret Pop Pocket Oracle. It comes with a little, you know, velvet red pouch. And the little teeny deck um, of Mildred Payne's Secret Pocket Oracle. Pocket Oracle with the hag card on the back. So, this is a lot of fun. If you go to the website, which I will put a link to below, um, you can see that he's got some... Um, He's got some different posts kind of leading up to the background of who this person is and all kinds of neat things like that kind of to build into the mythology of the uh, whole occasion here. Let me zoom in a little bit since we're looking at some small cards here. So in terms of a guidebook, it comes with this like brown paper package is tied up in strings, right? Um, we have fetus for new beginnings here. So basically it says the meanings below represent just some of the possible interpretations for Mildred's Oracle. Feel free to use your own insight and definitions while performing your reading. So again, if you're comfortable with Sibylla or Kipper or Lenormand, it's that kind of cardamancy. What does that image say to you, right? A boot, talking about moving and walking. These boots are made for walking. And that's just what they'll do. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you just kind of go with what these things bring to you. But we do have some keywords for it, which we'll look at when we get the cards. There are 52 cards in this little deck. And then it has a past, present, and fit future three-card gypsy reading. Um, it says, in 2017, asylum workers discovered an old hospital gown hidden in a wall. Mildred was written on the inside collar. Upon further examination of the garment, the workers were surprised to find a tiny pocket sewn into the underside containing a crude yet mysterious handmade oracle. The following deck is an exclusive reproduction of Mildred Payne's secret pocket oracle made by 2017 by Deviant Moon Incorporated. <laughs> so let's take a look here at the little cute box. Oops, they are also wrapped on the inside. So it's just got a basic little tuck box, you know, standard, standard tuck box, which I am fine with in, in smaller decks like Lenormand and things of that nature. Um, here we go. Now I will say that because, so there's a little artist card. Now, I don't know if we need that particular piece or not to the puzzle. So, sorry, I got cut off, so now I'm not sure where we are. I think I just took off. I think I just took off the wrapping, but here we have the little cards. Now, the backs have... Uh, different things that I'm assuming make some kind of a puzzle. So before I shuffle it, I want to look at that more closely. Um, so, 
So that's the art card, obviously. Then we have a smaller image of uh, this that came with it. And I'm going to go ahead and take out the um, ladder card and put the new one in. As you'll see, well, I don't want to get them mixed up. This is the this is the one that's supposed to go in. So you can see the backs are different, which tells me it's pro there's nothing else different. So that tells me that it's probably because it needs to fit a particular image. So let's put those back. So all of these different backs laid down in some kind of order is probably going to make some kind of a picture. We'll try to see if we can work it out after we take a look at these cards. So little box, so it's, again it's that mini uh, grand tableau size or uh, Lenormand size. Obviously I will be blocking the sides um, of this promptly and I will show you when I do that. But let's zoom in for the moment and look at the cards into the little bitty cards. So obviously here we have the fetus card. Lovely, lovely name, right? Um, because this is a strange, gremlin-y, creepy little deck, uh, which is going to be wonderful for Embrace the Magical or Halloween. <laughs> uh, this is New Beginnings, very similar to a child card. Uh, here we have time. This can be pressure and deadlines. Just time is moving, right? Here we have the hag for our fears and our nightmares, uh, things that we're afraid of. Here we have the girl for innocence, carefree thoughts, youthful emotions, and then the boy for playful, curious, untamed enthusiasm, so kind of male and female. Of course, we have the typical innocence for the girls, as if all girls are innocent. I'm assuming we could also use these uh, for... Um, significator cards if we wanted to. Uh, here we have the devil for evil, nasty habits, deceit, and abuse. Of course this could also be for um, the things that we're afraid of that we're putting off on other people. Uh, and you could use the hag for something else I suppose. Again you can play with these things. We have the tooth for losing something considered permanent or a difficult a difficult separation. You know, you think about pulling the tooth out. <laughs> we have blood for life, vitality, sacrifice, heritage, ancestry. We have ear for hearing news, listening, being aware in situations. We have the eye for omniscient omniscience, and knowledge, vigilance, honesty, and bearing witness. We have the heart for strong emotions, love, you know, things we would think of, and passion. We have the hand, giving or receiving help, friendliness, like reaching your hand out, so that's good. The skull for death, <laughs> or thoughts or feelings of mortality, change, the end of a cycle, so sort of the death idea. We have the moon for natural cycles as well as lunacy, because this is the deviant moon. <laughs> the sun for life, power, energy, mental clarity. The sun, oh wait, the storm for turbulent times, danger, and troubled emotions. Fire for passion, creativity, consuming emotions, and utter destruction. <laughs> Water for purity, change, life, subconscious thoughts, mysterious feelings. The dagger for deceit, betrayal, and hidden aggressions. The boot for travel and moving forward, preparing for action. The key for freedom or imprisonment. Are you locking something in or unlocking things? Keeping something safe, resolving a mystery. We have the cat here for resurrection, our independent person, intuition, and it can be for misfortune if you see the cat that way. The flower for beauty, kindness, and gifts. The mirror for self-reflection and reevaluating your perceptions. It can also be vanity. A stick for branching out on your own and also could be representation of power or abuse. You know, is it your, your kind of... Oh, 
holding the big stick or are you hitting somebody with it? A poppet, I love this, for manipulation, brainwashing, and having control over someone. Wall for obstacle separation, also for protection and maintaining boundaries. The house for personal identity, family, stability, safe place. Moth for that transformation, but also for feeling help, being helplessly attracted to something like the light. Look away from the light. Oops, I don't want to mix these up till we try to find the picture. The wheel for progress, venturing into one's destiny, travel, coming full circle. Love this tree for strong growth, season, stability, reaching new heights. A ladder for high achievements, overcoming obstacles, stepping up in life. <laughs> kind of high honors of Kipper. The door for opportunity, new situations. So you can see this is not all darkness. Factory for hard work, industri industriousness, and bringing your ideas to reality. The rat for a traitor or untrustworthy person, as well as possible disease. The snake for fear, sexual fantasies, and temptations. Going for the snake in the Garden of Eden kind of idea. The pentagram for humanity. The sum of a lifetime of choices and material gain. Interesting. The bell for an awakening, beginning or end of an important event, and or a warning sound. The broom is next for getting a situation in order, domestic duties, as well as an erotic encounter. You know, a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of domestic duties, of course, is going to result in an erotic encounter. I don't know. Chalice for abundance, celebration, and dreams or aspirations yet achieved. The fish. Oh, love the teeth. Uh, pregnancy, unconscious thoughts, good fortune, but can also represent suspicion. I would be suspicious if I saw that fish with teeth. I love the cauldron for fertility, magical combinations, and experimentation. The orbuculum, orbuculum, I've never heard of that, or I've never seen that used. O-R-B-U-C-U-L-U-M. That is obviously a crystal ball for insights, prophetic glimpses into the future and searching for answers. How neat would that be to look for the cards on either side of that? The octopus for greed, entanglements, multitasking, and high intelligence. That's very true of the octopus. Poison for accepting something harmful, self-destruction, and toxic people. I would see this more as eating away. I mean, obviously, these are very simple symbols, similar to Lenormand, similar to Sibylla, similar to Kipper, uh, similar to tea and coffee reading, uh, where you just kind of see what does that symbol in the middle of that question say to you. Protection for something. Sanctuary, but it can also be a bad omen, I think, if you open up inside the house. <laughs> A candle for spiritual enlightenment, hope, and life. A trumpet for spiritual, that looks more like an eyeglass. I'm not going to lie, I would not think of that as a trumpet. Spiritual vibrations, communication with the departed, and an awakening, you know, that call to new life. Love the crow here, omen of bad news. Uh, I'm going to call it an omen, and a moving from place to place. The coin for wealth, prosperity, and getting a better position in life. So don't be mis you changed by the fish, uh, which is, is money in Lenormand, because there is an actual coin card. Uh, spider for strong and powerful female energies and carefully designing your life. And the Ankh for secret knowledge, life, increased awareness, and exalted power. So there we have all of the cards. Now, before we do anything else, let's just scroll out here. I'm going to just start to, I don't know where you would, how you would know. Let's see, let's try one. I will say there's a little bit of, do these go together? No. So one and two do not go together. So it looks to be more of a puzzle. See, there's a person that says mother. 
So I'm guessing definitely it's more of a puzzle than it is. It's not going to like laying them out in a in a in order. Let me go this way. And here we see like here we have the fish. Those are going nope together nope. Kind of looks like those would. So it looks like a real puzzle. Um, and we're gonna can look for some hair over here. So it looks like a puzzle, which I won't be doing trying to do on video. <laughs> so let's put these back in here. Um, one second, I'm gonna check something. Okay, I'm just kind of loosely, and this is really loosely grabbing out what what I would be considered full on negative cards. So this is a 52, 52 card deck, I believe. 54, 54 cards. Uh, we only have two, four, six, eight, ten that would be considered negative. Now, I wouldn't consider the crow negative, but it is an omen of bad news if you use their keywords. So that's ten negative. There are others, and I didn't pull them all out, but there are these that could be both, right? So we have the snake as fear. Uh, and also temptation, but also sexual fantasies, which isn't necessarily a negative thing. Uh, the wall as well, this could be um, obstacles and separation, but it could also be protection and maintaining boundaries, so that's both. The moth uh, could be transformation, but it could also be hopelessly attracted to something that's not going to do you any good, right, taking you to the light. Um, so those are kind of iffy, and I'm sure there's more like that that are a little bit iffy. But for the most part, this is definitely not an overly negative deck, even though obviously it's got the creepy girl on here, and you definitely have this whole creepy story about it going on. So while it has all of the trappings of that because it's fun and, and just cool to do, um, in terms of readability, um, it's not an overtly negative, creepy deck. So I love that because that means it's probably actually going to be usable versus just something kind of cool and fun to play with, right? Um, so let me set these to the side and set these to the side. And set this to the side here. So let's uh, take a good shuffle here. They have two, they have a spirit reading where you shuffle uh, and then place and fan the cards and then let Mildred assist you choosing. No, no, Kelly's not going to let Mildred choose anything. <laughs> so we're just going to think about a question and then uh, you can pick uh, influences, current situation or outcome, past, present and future kind of reading. You can also, I think, very easily use significator cards. So for example, if you were looking to do with money, right, you might choose the a card on either side and figure out what it is that you're looking for. Um, you could choose obviously the heart card or house to see what's going on, just like you or I would with Lenormand. Um, you know, you're in the midst of trance, or you need to figure out, well, do you need some protection? What's going on around the protection, right? What is it that you're afraid of? And see what would come out on either side. I mean, this isn't exactly what it was, but if you were going to see, okay, what are the fears there? Um, there's a, quite a lot of interesting, what are some magical things that you should be aware of that could help you in those realms? So I think there's some actually cool uh, significators that you could use uh, in this particular deck. But let's put it back here. I probably can't get a little mini riffle shuffle, but let's try it. Not very well, <laughs> which is understandable. It's small. The cardstock is actually nice. It does have a little bit of a gloss to it, uh, but not a strong gloss. And it's nice. It's a nice weight. Uh, for a small deck, it slips, you know, it side shuffles really nicely. Obviously, these are small enough you could just put them on the table. Then you could pull a three card, have the umbrella, the house, and the ankh. 
So here we have that umbrella as that sort of protection from the rain. Uh, I love that. We have the house here as what we would typically think of with house. But they also have it as personal identity, your family, your stability, where you're safe. So um, kind of this in the umbrella, let's say I'm just, I could go by my own, but let's see. Protection from something beyond control, a sanctuary, right? So creating a sanctuary out of your home, it might be a time to clean up and, uh, you know, sm um, smudge and do the things that you like to do to feel that sense of protection in your own house. Uh, ending with the Ankh, which is the idea of secret knowledge, life. Being aware is about increased awareness as well, so I would kind of see that. Okay, you might want to set up some protections around your home, create a sanctuary around your home, and be aware, be more a little bit more uh, aware of what's going on. Um, and p there may be things going on underneath that are really important that you're not quite aware of. So that might be how you might read that particular reading if you're just doing it in general. Uh, let's pull nine cards. And there's a nice little jumper there, factory. Let's just see what we get here. We've got the mirror, we've got the key, we've got the hand, we have the ladder, the dagger, and the crystal ball. We have the storm, the devil, and the hag. So a lot underneath the surface. See what we can see? What's going on underneath the surface? Well, there's a lot of upheaval and the storm is, is, is I'm assuming, let's just look, turbulent times, troubles, emotions. Well, why? Well, some things that you're afraid of. Now, how are we going to differentiate? This is what I would like to know. Let's take a look again. Because they both bring up those connotations. Now, I would probably leave the hag as something that you're maybe afraid of, and the devil as more of that tarot understanding. Because to me, the, the construct of the devil is abdicating your power, both good and bad. Uh, it's that whole idea of what, what do we do with monsters is we take the things in ourselves that we don't like or that we're afraid of, and we put it onto something else. The devil made me do it, right? Uh, Frankenstein, you know, let's burn down the monster because you know it's not me it's not within me it's within somebody else or something else let's make it something scary it's creating that other idea so that to me works really well now this has this nasty habits deceit and abuse but I think I would just read it strictly as that sort of that monster identity although you could also do the hag right that way but the idea of abdicating your power and giving over um, even your your own um, your own faults and flaws and trying to put it off on somebody else so that's sort of what it is in, in yourself that you're abdicating so there's a lot of emotional turmoil over in some way perhaps abdicating power to what to our fears so if the hag is literally about what your fears and your nightmares are you're giving over you're giving over your power to fears and nightmares that's not something you want to do so that's a really telling bottom and what's kind of funny is that this is the nightmare card here and I've been watching a lot of um, alien res all of the alien series as well as a couple other scary movies by myself which I don't normally do because I usually wait until some of my friends in town or Katie comes over or something like that where I don't have to be by myself right after watching scary things and so I've definitely had a lot of nightmares of late and it's all my own fault you know I gave over that power to watching a bunch of scary movies um, <laughs> but anyways that would be a very powerful and telling I didn't ask a question obviously but that would be that would be a telling thing there now, as with most nine cards, I'm going to look to these two cards to kind of sum things up. And so the dagger lets us know that there are some hidden aggressions. There's some things going on beneath the, surf beneath the surface that we aren't aware of that we might be wanting to pay attention to, right? Somebody may have betrayed us. There may be just something not good going on uh, um, that we want to pay attention to. But 
with the mirror here, it's self-reflection, right? So are you self-sabotaging? Especially giving what's going on here, I would look at this and say, okay, what ways are you actually stopping yourself? A, you're obviously you know, abdicating your power over to the things that you're afraid of, which is not going to help you in any way, right? And that is causing some self-sabotage. You're not going to accomplish what you want to because of that. But look what we have above. We have self-reflection, like opening the key to actually being able to do something, getting help, ask for help, as well as giving help. Um, I love this kind of message here because self-reflection says maybe the key is, is to ask somebody for some help. Um, so that's really a lovely combination there as well and even below we have the ladder uh, here which is achievements and overcoming obstacles well, what's the obstacle we already talked about self-sabotage and maybe we need to use the um, orbuculum or the uh, <laughs> the crystal ball here um, to get some insights, to look for some better answers because this self-sabotage isn't working. So you can see, I, and again, there was just, that was just kind of no question, which I'm not usually fond of, but you can see how this is actually, I think, quite readable, and I think it is really, really awesome. <laughs> so two thumbs up for me. Um, if anybody has managed to put this together and make a puzzle, let me know. I'm going to go blacken these edges really quick, and I'll come back and show you that before uh, wrapping this up. Okay, whoa, <laughs> there they are a little slippy, I will say. Um, there you can see I have blacked the edges, and I didn't, I tried to not actually be real careful about it. I have a couple other decks like that where I really kind of wanted a little bit of the black to come to the front, all because it already has that smudging there. So I think it looks awesome really I mean you, it's just meant to be black and I don't I don't I know not everybody's into it but I just don't know how you can take that deck when it was just white on the side and not black it <laughs> but that's I know personal preference so there you have it it's been a look at the Mildred Payne the secret pocket Kit Oracle um, by the creator of the Deviant Moon. Uh, I will put a link to it below. Make sure you check out there's there's like all this little backstory uh, posts and I definitely think it's worth checking that out. <laughs> there you go. 